Korea boasts an extensive history of 5,000 years, yet its time as a democratic republic is only 75. Understandably, the initial stages of democratic development in Korea were extremely tumultuous. Ideals of democracy were constantly corrupted by political leaders who sought to extend a dictatorship over the people. After its first implementation of democracy, South Koreans witnessed the rise and fall of six republics. These republics mark five major changes in the nation's constitution, mainly due to government leaders trying to protect their own power at the cost of South Korea's collective national progress. Before the rapid economic growth during President Park Jung hees regime in the 1960s and 70s, South Koreans were largely indifferent to national politics, since the question of everyday sustenance dominated most people. Hunger was prevalent and poverty was rampant. Luckily, increased industrialization gave South Koreans some hope that they might put an end to poverty. People naturally became inclined to consider political rights. They opened their eyes to the oppressive tactics of the government and demanded fair and direct elections and checks and balances, among others. As a result, President Park's regime ended when he amended the constitution to justify dictatorship. Park's charisma and his immense contribution to the economy did little to quell people's increasing desire for freedom. This ideology manifested a few years later as a June struggle, a nationwide movement which greatly expanded the frontier of democratic thought in South Korea. After President Park, Korea was not yet free from oppressive rule as Chun Doo-won, Park's successor, continued his legacy. Opposing political parties, non-governmental political groups, and regular citizens pushed for a change to a direct election system to ensure fair and democratic rule. However, the Chun regime only increased the suppression of such democratic protests and pushed for a parliamentary cabinet system instead. Still, since most of the public was still disinterested in protests, there was not enough fuel to make a significant political change. Amid such protests in 1987, a surprising story hit the news. Park jong chol a student at Seoul National University, was apprehended in a protest and questioned for information regarding the protest leaders. But after he was taken by the police, the young student was found dead in the office where he underwent the so-called interrogation. The government gave a nonchalant response. Uh, 조사관이 책상을 탁 치니 억하고 응? 쓰러졌답니다. 지금 네? 아, 그게 말이 됩니까? 그러니까 책상을 탁 치니 억하고 쓰러졌다 이겁니까? However, the truth was soon brought to light. Contrary to the government fabricated tales, Chong Chol died from waterboarding torture by the police as a means to force information from the student. Media played an imperative role in spreading this news, preventing the attempt of the government to conceal the truth once again. Civilians opened their eyes to the ruthless nature of the people who were supposed to be their representatives. More people started to join the protests to rebel against the oppressive government. 89년도에 이제 대학을 들어갔는데 어 어쩌면 노동자나 농민이나 이런 서민이나 이런 분들이 이제 우리 이 사회의 주인이 돼야 일하는 사람들이 주인이 돼야 되는데 그 사람들이 이제 주인이 되지 못하고 있는 사회다 뭐 이런 어떤 인식들이 있었고 그렇기 때문에 이 사람들이 노동자 농민들이 나름대로 이제 주인 되는 세상을 우리가 이제 만들 수 있다 만들어야 한다 어떤 대학교 때 같은 경우에는 좀 이념적인 이런 문제 때문에 이렇게 학생 운동을 좀 했었고 as an attempt to appease their outcry. Chon made a special declaration a few months later on April 13th. This declaration, also known as the 413 Constitutional Amendment Measures, sought to justify previous actions of the government as well as provide rationale for future actions. Chon adamantly stated that he would not resign from office until the following year, nor amend the constitution to promote a direct election system.
중대한 결단을 내리지 않으면 안 되게 되었습니다. 이제 본인은 임기 중 개헌이 불가능하다고 판단하고 현행 헌법에 따라 내년 2월 25일 본인의 임기 만료와 더불어 후임자에게 정부를 양할 것을 천명하는 바입니다. He explained that a direct election system was preventive to a peaceful regime change, which is important to successfully execute the 1988 Seoul Olympics and protect national prestige. This only added fuel to the already maddened South Koreans. On June 10th, people went out to the street with the slogan of Hoan Cholpe Tokte Tado, or Abolition of Constitutional Law, Overthrow of Dictatorship. Blue collared workers, white collars, Christians, students, women, men, the elderly, and various entities came together to turn the protests into a national event. The situation exacerbated when Lee Han Yol, a student at Yonsei University, was killed from a tear gas thrown by the police. The death of innocent youth such as Han Yol and Jong Chol infuriated the public. Then President Chan took matters to extremes when he ordered a garrison decree, officially permitting the use of lethal force against civilians. Not only was it severely criticized by the international community, it also wasn't enough to control the protesters. Finally, on June 29, 1987, John finally resigned. The result of these countless sacrifices was a successful re-implementation of democracy in South Korea. The succeeding president, Ro Tae-woo, succumbed to the public's demands and finally confirmed a constitutional amendment to realize a direct election system. Of course, some argue that the June protests slowed down the pace of South Koreans' economic success, which has been increasing at an unprecedented speed. After all, the economy under President Jun, despite blatant infringement of civil rights, prospered with an annual economic growth rate of 10%. At the end of Jun's regime, Korea's GDP had increased by 277.3%. Nevertheless, behind the lavish glow of the Han River miracle, the core engine of South Korean economic growth, the country's politics has been rotten to the core. Something had to be done. Someone had to do it. Through collective effort, Korean citizens realized a nation that is now ranked as 16th of 167 countries in the official democratic index. In addition to the political outcomes, the people also unknowingly pushed the ideological and social frontiers of the nation. The previously disinterested Korean public now realized that all power lied solely in their hands. This further manifested in the 2016-17 candlelight rallies, in which South Koreans underwent a peaceful protest to impeach the then president. South Korean politics had its backlash and struggles. Now, thanks to those who laid down one's life in the June 1987 protests, South Koreans would forever dream about a better tomorrow. Thank you.